here we are asked to solve an ODE, second order ODE, linear, with the right hand side Q of T defined in a piecewise manner. Now we're also coupling that problem with some initial conditions. Now you can solve this problem a variety of ways, but the objective of this particular presentation is to illustrate how to use Laplace transforms to solve this problem. Now on the right hand side I've drawn a graph of the right hand side of the ODE. Okay, so for t between 0 and pi on 2 it's just the t function and then it becomes the constant function uh, pi on 2. Now this is sometimes referred to as ramp loading possibly because you, the profile looks like a ramp and then you know a flat part. So how do we do it? Well there are certain steps in solving these kinds of problems with the Laplace transforms and these ideas can be applied to lots of you know, other uh, linear problems with um, constant coefficients. Okay, so let's um, see if we can solve the problem. Now just to remind you, the Laplace transform is an integral operator. You take a function, you multiply through by an exponential and you set up an improper integral. Now to compute Laplace transforms, we don't want to be integrating every time. From a practical point of view, it makes sense to use a table. So you've got functions down the left-hand side and functions uh, the transforms down the right-hand side. Now for this problem we start with the differential equation and we're going to take the transform of both sides. Now the first question is okay I can actually use an idea on the left hand side called the transform of derivatives. So here we've got the second derivative and just uh, y. You can use this idea here where y double primes here, big y is here, little y of zero, little y prime of zero is here. But what about the right hand side? How do you take the Laplace transform of that Q of T? Well what I'm going to do, I'm going to express U of t, uh, Q of T in terms of a heavy side step function. Okay. Now a heavy side step function or a unit step function is like a switching function and its profile looks like a, a step. So the challenge now is if I'm going to go down this road, the challenge is to try to write this as or in terms of a heavy side step function. So let's just spend a little bit of time talking about that first. Then we'll take the transform. Okay, so you can see from the picture something happens at the point t equals pi on 2. There's a switch really, there's no jump but there's a switch from one function to another function. Okay? So, I start off with t, and then that t gets turned off, and this constant function gets turned on. So, using the heavy side step function, what I'm going to have to do is form this. Now, just to refresh your memory, the heavy side step function, which is written like this, it's 0 for t less than the point C. It's 1 half at the point C, and it's positive 1 to the right of C. So let's so in this context C would be pi on 2. So let's see what happens here. To the left of pi on 2, this is 0, so it's t minus t times 0, so I just basically get the t function, that's good. To the right of 0, what happens? Well, this is going to get switched on now, so it's going to be t minus t times 1, and I get 0. Is that what I want? No. I want pi on 2. Otherwise my graph would be down here. 
So what I want to do actually is add in another term. Okay, so the first term gives you the initial curve on the left. The middle term cancels off that t function. And the, la the third term in our q of t shifts, sort of put, puts the constant in place. Okay, so if you look closely, what I can do now is write this as a particular combination. If I combine these two terms, then I get the following. Now, so, well, so what? Well, if I'm going to take the transform of both sides of this ODE, I need to take the transform of this and this product. Now, what is this product? It's a special product involving two shifted functions. Okay? It's the second shifting theorem that we would apply to this particular term when we take the transform. Now, the second shifting theorem says that the product of these two functions is this exponential times big G of S, where big G of S is the transform of little g of t. Now, in, in this thing I've got c, here I've got a, a and c are constants, okay? So in this context, a would be pi on 2. Okay, so that's a good place to be. That's a good place to be. So let's start the process then. So let's take the transform of both sides of our OD. We've spent a little bit of time writing this in the correct form. Okay, so on the left hand side we're going to get the Laplace transform of y double prime plus four times the Laplace transform of y. Remember the Laplace transform is a linear operator. Okay, now I've spent a bit of time putting this in a nice format. What I'm going to do is calculate the transforms uh, involving Q of T. Okay, so here I need to calculate the transform of a derivative. We can use our transform of derivatives formula. Okay, so here, you know, little f would be replaced with little y, big F would be replaced with big y, etc. So on this, I'm going to use the transform of derivatives. Here, I'm not going to touch it. Here, I can use my table. And here I can use the second shifting theorem. Okay, so let's work our way through that. So TOD means transform of derivatives. And over here I'm going to use the second shifting theorem. Okay. Okay, so the Laplace transform of y double prime. So that's the transform of the first part. This is just the, the, the same. The Laplace transform of t, what's that? Well, you can probably remember that, but if you forget it, you can look at the table. The Laplace transform of t is 1 on s squared. And now over here, we've got the second shifting theorem. Okay, so if you look down your table, it's kind of like this product here. So the second shifting theorem says that the transform of this particular shifted product is an exponential times the transform of the unshifted little g. So, if, so, so in this context, t minus pi on 2 is my g of t minus c. What would, if, if little g of t minus c is t minus pi on 2, what would g of t be? Just t, right? 
So if I take the transform of just T, I'll get exactly what I have here. And you just want to multiply through by the correct by the correct exponential. Okay? So I'll get the following product. Okay, so now what I'm aiming to do in this transformed environment is to solve for big Y of S. Then I can untransform everything and get back to the solution to the ODE. So what I need to do now is apply the initial conditions. So if I look at my, my initial conditions from up here, I can just basically go through and replace, well that's going to be zero and that's going to be zero. Okay, so that's zero, that's zero. So these things are going to disappear. I can factor out my big Y of S and then make Y of S the subject and I've, I've solved the transform setting. So, so apply the initial conditions and rearrange. To form the following. So I've got a common factor. I'll make y of s the subject. So essentially I'm just dividing both sides by s squared plus 4. Okay, so now I've solved now I've solved the transform problem. The tricky thing is, is getting, the, getting everything back to the original setting. So let's take the inverse transform and see how, how we go. So how do we take the inverse transform? We've got to take the inverse transform of that and that. Okay, so how do we do it? Well, I can break that up into partial fractions. It's actually not that hard. Okay? With, with this one, I've got an exponential times a function of s. So if I look down my table, there's an exponential times a function of s, and there's the inverse transform. So I'm using the second shifting theorem in reverse. I'm using the second shifting theorem to calculate the inverse transform of that second term in the bottom right-hand corner. OK? All right. So the first thing I'm going to do, because it's tricky to take the inverse transform of this, I'm going to play with it and break it up into um, a more usable form. So how do I do that? Well, what I'm going to do is write these two terms, essentially one minus the other, in the numerator. Now, if you look, the s squares will cancel each other out, and I've got a 4 up the top. I don't want a 4, I want a 1. So what I can do is just multiply through by, one on by a quarter, and I actually have, have it there. Now, you may think, how does that help me? Well, if I bracket that up and write this as two terms, Okay, so this over this minus this over this. You can see that I'm going to get some cancellation. Okay, in the first term, those are going to cancel. I'm going to get 1 on s squared. And in the second term, this, uh, the s squares will cancel. I get 1 on s squared plus 4. So as you can see, if you... If you play with these simple problems, you can save a lot of time. Okay, so can I calculate the inverse transforms of these two terms? Yes, I can. So we're in a good setting here. You can see that, you know, there, that that's the first bit, and that's, uh, sorry, that's almost the second bit. So we're in a good place. 
So I want to take the inverse transform of this and the inverse transform of this. Now, once I have the inverse transform of this, because these two terms are the same, I've actually kind of solved the inverse transform for the second part. Okay? For the second bit. So let's calculate this. Now the one quarter will come to the front, so it's the inverse transform of this minus the inverse transform of this. Okay, so we can get this from a table. The inverse transform of this is T, and the inverse transform of this is almost, it's almost sine 2t, but not quite. We need to, to just, because um, uh, if we had uh, 2 there, we'd, we'd be right. But we actually have to adjust for that. So I'm going to adjust by uh, a factor of 1 half. Okay. So we've calculated the inverse transform of this bit. What about this bit? Well, we're going to use the second shifting theorem there. Okay, the second shifting theorem says that... that the inverse transform of an exponential times a function of s is this product. Okay, where u of t minus c is the heaviside step function, or the heaviside unit step function. Okay. So let's, uh, let's take a new page. So, our solution is the inverse transform of this, which is this. Okay, which is uh, this minus the transform of this. And this is where we're going to use the second shifting theorem. What does the second shifting theorem say? It says that the inverse transform of this product is this, where little g of t is the inverse transform of big G of, G of s. So that's my big G of s, and I already know the inverse transform of that. It's right there. Okay? So that makes it a lot easier. Okay, so the inverse transform of this is this. So I just want to shift it now, replace t with t minus uh, pi on 2. Okay, so here I've used the second shifting theorem. Okay, so hopefully you can see that the method for each of these problems is clear. Take the transform of derivative, uh, take the transform of your ODE apply the transform of derivatives and the initial conditions. Solve the problem for big Y of S. Once you've got that, you've, you almost solve the problem. You just got to take the inverse transform and get back to little y of t. Now, the inver calculating the inverse transform is the difficult thing. You need to be on top of all the shifting theorems, using the tables, uh, and so on. This is where students have the most problems. So you need to uh, be confident and, and realise that, okay, it's a step-by-step -step process and the most challenging thing is finding the inverse transform, in my opinion. Okay?